Um, so I usually like to start with um, you know a simple flat surface and use it to build um, to build walls. So let me <clears throat> let me dig out some floor tile images here. One minute. All right. The other thing that's helpful is to um, establish a, a building. for me to, to talk and build at the same time, but uh, bear with me. Uh, too much of a grid. Eh, not so bad. Alright, so any sort of simple repeating pattern you can use as a grid to help you align things. Um, Have any of you experimented with the uh, the building building tools built into Second Life? <laughs> They're a little bit scary to begin with sometimes. I hear someone's children. It's always good good to have a kid. <laughs> All right. So another thing that that's that's I find interesting about building in, in virtual environments is that it's it's actually really really difficult to get the first instance of an object to to come out correctly. So I spend a lot of my time setting things up more or less correctly once. Like um, you know we'll call this a, we'll call this a simple wall. Um, and it's really easy in the virtual environment to clone things so i can make as many you know as many instances of any one object as i want um, and change the you know positions and orientations of things and that helps um, helps with construction quite a bit um, so some interesting things you'll you'll see as i put this together are like some of the the wall joints where the walls go together they may look okay from from one angle um, but you'll find that they aren't quite right from other angles if you walk around them. For example, um, in the walls on the on the left here, there's actually a small a small gap uh, between the two of them. And um, when, when you're constructing things like this, you end up spending quite a bit of time at the end sort of fixing things up after the fact. Um, so here, we'll make a few more walls. The other neat thing about um, this environment as a, a place to build is that, you know, while I'm doing most of the construction here myself, building things is, doesn't necessarily have to be limited to one person. You can collaborate with other people while doing it. Um, there are, for example, building classes in Second Life where interested people will, will teach you their, their building techniques. Um, and so you can watch them do it in, in, in real time. You're not uh, necessarily reading a book about it. So let's see. I'll put the door over here where you guys can see it. One thing that we don't, we unfortunately don't support uh, in Second Life is the ability to import content from existing 3D um, creation tools. Um, so in the in the 3D industry, there's a couple of, of really famous tools. There's one called uh, 3D Studio Max, and there's one called Maya. Um, they're both owned now, I believe, by a company called Autodesk that used to make um, computer-aided design and manufacturing software. Um, and they they have a standard. Well, they have lots of different file formats they can use for output. Um, right now, we can't do anything with those um, files. Uh, that may change soon. Um, we haven't made any formal announcements about that, um, but we're working internally on a, a feature that will let you um, import 3D content from other tools uh, that should make the, the variety of objects available in Second Life um, be a lot more, um, more, more varied and more, detail, or more detailed. Uh, let's see, here we go. If I can just jump in and say to the students, do fly up and around and you saw me just flying above and then landing in the middle of what James is building. Um, and when you, when you fly up, go, 
when, when you fly up, go into Mass Look and you'll get a, a better view of everything that's going on. Again, it's one of the nice advantages of Second Life. You can actually see what's happening and, and you get an idea of uh, the whole sort of three-dimensional perspective if you just literally travel around as, you, uh, as somebody's building. And it'll be a great uh, and it'll be photo, a great, op for uh, photo op for me. And can I ask anyone who has a microphone to close, open it? To close so it? So that would be me, so that would and, be me Mohammed. and Mohammed. If we could click on our if mics click on and our close mics them, then I, won't close get them then I won't get multiple people speaking. People. So let's see. Um, Actually, I probably won't try to demonstrate writing scripts because there's not a good way for you guys to see that. So if you go above, you get, an, you get an idea of what James has built and how there's two rooms already um, very roughly set up in this uh, one uh, building. One of the things that we did in the bioterrorism uh, project that you had a look at last week uh, was to monitor while we were teaching people uh, from above. And so... Uh, I and one of the other people involved in that project literally flew around on top and watched what all of the um, staff were doing when they were learning how to use the actual software. And uh, it was a, a very unusual approach to essentially qualitatively evaluating a, uh, a project. So another interesting thing with, with construction in this environment is if you, if you walk into this little um, sort of doorway area I, I've created here. Um, I put a bunch of simple um, chair and table type objects in it. Um, let me actually pick one that looks nice. Um, and so one of, the, one of the, the neat things you can do in this environment is if you're careful about the, um, the scales of things, the, the relative sizes of things, um, you can kind of get a sense of whether or not um, uh, physical layouts will will work in the real world. Um, so, for example, if you walk through here, I've made the the walls here um, about three meters tall. So this would be a roughly equivalent to a ten foot ceiling. Um, the perspective is a little odd in three D environments um, because by default that your view on the world is behind your own head. Um, so you may find that that things that you create um, look smaller. Uh, than they would be if you if you strictly followed the scale. Um, that's actually one of the things that that Peter is is recommending. If you have a mouse wheel, um, you can roll the mouse wheel forward, and it'll take your view more and more and more forward until you're kind of looking through your character's eyes, um, and that gives you a, a much better perspective for um, for how the space will actually feel. Um, one thing that I've I've found in in trying to build real world. Um, uh, locations is that you actually do have to scale them up for the virtual environment. Everything in, in Second Life is a little bit bigger um, than it is normally. Um, also looking around I'm discovering that I'm I'm having exactly the the placement problem that I, I suggested lots of us have. This chair that I have selected and I'm moving around right now I initially spawned um, you know probably a good foot or two off of the floor. Um, so it's again it's very easy for your sense of, of objects, locations, or positions to be fooled in this kind of environment. Um. <clears throat> James, if I can just interrupt, uh, I mean, one of the sure. issues that um, we've found in Second Life that, that I know Marty and I have run into problems with in our uh, projects has been that the average person in Second Life is over seven foot tall. And uh, so you do actually need to make the buildings literally a physically a bit bigger than, uh, than a true scale model, probably by about 15 or 20 percent. The only alternative, of course, is to get everybody to shorten themselves, which they can do, but it's a pain. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, I, I don't actually have any statistics on the, the average size of, of characters in the world, but um, yeah, people when given the choice about how tall they want to be, especially when their default view is kind of up and behind, um, people choose to be uh, much taller than they are in the real world. <laughs> and I think I the default the avatars are tall too. Yeah, I think they are. Our current crop of default avatars is actually created by um, folks from our user community. I think we had a contest or bidding process or something to select them. <laughs> 